Okay, we are recording. Who's here to join us? Um, so thank you guys for getting on. Jenny um, is joining us tonight. Jenny Smith, who is a fellow coach in Epic Dream Team. Um, if anyone has noise going on in the background, if you want to just mute yourself, I'm getting like a lot of feedback from someone. Um, anyway, Jenny has been a coach, I think, just a couple months longer than me. Didn't you start in December 2014, Jenny? Yeah, I count it as January, but okay. officially <laughs> December. End of, end of December, beginning of January. Um, and she is um, under Cassie Marie, who is um, her good friend and who is on Christie's team. Um, but they've built the business together as, as friends. And you are, I'm sorry, a three-star diamond coach, Jenny? No, I'm one star. I've never actually hit the three-star for the Okay, six well, you have some awesome diamonds on your team, I know, and <laughs> um, really great team. So um, you did go three-star qualifying, right, at one point? Yeah, I have a couple of times, but um, <laughs> qualifying is a rough rough time for me. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we've all... We'll all go through it, I'm sure. So, um, so anyway, Jenny um, has built this business working full time the entire time she's um, she's been a coach, and she does CrossFit as well. She's got a boyfriend and a dog, um, no kids, but I know she um, maintains a pretty full schedule. So I just wanted her to come on to share with you all and um, talk about just growing her business and share her story and how she. Um, you know, works her business around her busy schedule and all that. So without further ado, Jenny, go, go for Yay! it. Yay! Thank you, guys. I'm so excited. Um, I love Lana. She's such an incredible coach. I just wanted to tell you guys that. You guys are so lucky to have such an awesome leader. And I'm so excited for her to talk on my team call. So um, like she said, I work full time. I worked full time the whole time I did this business actually as a new coach I was working full time and I was working two part time jobs it was actually one of the reasons I wanted to start coaching is because I had no time I was never home my poor dachshund Linus was by himself all the time which just broke my heart and so I wanted to be home more and I wanted to quit at least one of my part time jobs because you guys I don't have to preach this to you but, but I went to college I got a degree I got my full time job and I still couldn't make ends meet like that was my life, which is really, really depressing. Um, and so I was so excited when the coach opportunity came to me because I was hoping it could take the payment of those two things. So I knew, I was like, I'm going to go all in for this first, well, I was going to go on it in for the long term, but I was like, for the first month, if I can just take that income of one of my part-time jobs and I can leave that. And then in the next month, leave that. And I think after three months of coaching, I left my other two part-time jobs. So I was working full-time. Um, I was doing CrossFit, I lived with my boyfriend and my dog Linus, um, and just, I'm a busy person, I love being busy, um, I don't use it as like a bad thing, I like to be busy, oh hi Jess, oh, that's one of my coaches, um, so I have built this a lot from coaches, it's just, they just don't have time, right, um, and Something I had to tell myself because I, and if I cut out, you guys, my internet sucks. I live in a small town in <laughs> Iowa. Um, we have terrible internet here. Um, <laughs> we do. It's awful. Uh, but I used to make a lot of excuses as well. I used to be like, well, she's just successful because she's at home all day. Or she's just successful because she has blonde hair. Or she's just successful because whatever, insert, it's an excuse. And I needed to get rid of my excuses because I used to tell myself, well, you're really busy, Jenny. And then I give myself like that. It's kind of like giving yourself an out. You're like, well, um, I'm not like her. But then on a national wake up call, I heard one time, and it was, oh, one of the best things that I heard was we all have the same 24 hours in a day, right? And it's just what you're going to do with them. Beyonce, she's got 24 hours in a day. You've got 24 hours in a day. Lindsay Matway has 24 hours in a day. And you know what? It matters what you do with it. Um, so I had to get my butt in gear and stop making excuses for myself. Um, if you feel like you are overwhelmed, which is usually when it comes to time, when it comes to scheduling, the word that I always hear is overwhelmed. People are always like, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I know as soon as somebody comes to me and says they're overwhelmed, they do not have 
organization. They do not have a schedule in place that's working for them because if you have a schedule, you're not going to be overwhelmed. I am super tidy. Like, like there is not one part of my brain that is type A. I'm disorganized. I, um, if you can see my house, it is terrible. I've never been an organized person. So when I, I started this business and realized if I want this to be successful and I, I have to get organized, that scared the crap out of me. I was like, I've never been organized in anything, but it was an excuse. I'm just type B. But hey, if you want to be successful, you've got to take those excuses and make them the things that you um, make them things that you are good at. Um, so I got really freaking good at organization. It took me a long time, and not in anything else. The rest of my life is freaking train wreck. I lost my passport. I lost my my purse, my wallet, my keys all last week. Not even joking. You still have no idea where my keys are. That's my life every single week. Um. So, but. If I want to run a successful business, I can't sit here and use being type B as, as an excuse, can I? I also can't use um, being busy as an excuse. I had to sit down and be like, all right, I got to figure this out. And so I wrote down some of the things that I did, um, some of the like, my top tips, I guess, on how I did this. And number one was we all the same 24 hours in a day. That's just something mindset. I tell people, mindset is 80% of this business. If you're giving yourself excuses, if you're talking yourself out of stuff, if you're giving yourself a way out, you're not going to be successful. Like you got to stop doing that. Um, two is vision, belief, and why. I hope you guys are all doing the event training because those girls who do the trainings on vision, belief, and why blow my mind every single month. Every month. I wish I could do a training like that. They're so good. I'm like, oh, every month. It's amazing. So get in there because when you're busy, it's hard to show up. It's hard, right? It's not that anything that we do is hard. Like, it's so simple. All these little things we do, we give you all the things to do. Your upline is like, just do this, and, and nothing's hard. You're not um, standing out in the rain, you know, directing traffic. You're not um, mining in anything. I don't know. Like, think of, like, the shittiest job ever. You're not doing that. It's not hard. It's simple. It's so simple. It's just showing up. That's hard, right? And so when you're busy, it seems like, it seems like, you know, it starts seeming hard, right? But if you have a really clear vision, like you know what you want in your life, it becomes so much easier. You guys, I do not like making pretty graphics. We'll talk about pretty graphics later, but I don't really like doing that. It's not my jam and it seems like a waste of time to me. And so I took pieces of paper, scratch paper, wrote down my vision on them in permanent marker, took some scotch tape and just taped them to my wall. I literally have that sitting right here. So every time I sit down, I have it staring in my face. And it says, one of them says, your why has to be bigger than your excuses. That's literally looking at me right now. On one of them, it has my goals. On one of it, it has everything that I want to do written out. And I'm always adding things to this. So when I sit down and I think, God, I had such a long day at the office. I'm so busy. I look up there and I'm like, you're not that busy. Because as soon as you sit Start telling yourself you're too busy for something. Start asking yourself or start telling yourself it's just a priority. Maybe you're working this business because you want to be home with your family, right? Maybe you have kids. I don't have kids. I'll use my dog, for example. That would be me saying, Linus is just not a priority. Being home with him is just not a priority. I know. People get so offended that I talk about my dog as a child. But if you knew, I really am a crazy dog mom. Um, but my boyfriend and I, we want to move to Colorado. If I would come home from work and be like, oh, I had to work and then I had to go to CrossFit and then I had to do this and I only have an hour, I just want to sit down because guys, sometimes I just don't want to do anything. I'm a normal person, just like everybody else. But then I think, well, moving to Colorado is just not a priority. It's just not important to me. Those things that are really important to you, you need to be able to sit there and say, and if you say it's not a priority, it has to hit you in the gut and be like, no, it is a priority and I'm going to show up. Um... So yes, put those things somewhere where you can see them. And you know what I do every single day? This is kind of random. I'm so random. I'm sorry. But the very first thing I do every single day is I write down my goals. Same goals. I mean, I mean, everyone wants to know they're changing, but I write down the same every day. So that's my business. Success Club 10 and Ryan's business. Five star by summit. Um, $2,000 a week. I write that down every single morning so that I can sit there and I can be, okay, this is why you're going to show up today. This is why you're going to do this. Because this business can get monotonous because you're doing the same things over and over again. 
And sometimes you don't want to do them. But if you have that and you're like, yeah, I, I want to do that. I freaking want this. Then you, you get going, you get excited. Um, so number, this is, I'm not even going to say numbers. So I don't even know where I am. Um, so the most important thing is having a plan and what works for me might not work for you. Um, you're going to have to figure out, it was a lot of trial and error for me to figure out like with my brain, how I can make a plan I'm actually to stick with. Um, important things to do with this plan. You need to have a timer, a timer set. How much time or how much time do you have to work? So maybe you're like, okay, I can work from seven to eight in the morning. I can work from noon to one. That's it. Maybe that's all you can work, right? So you're like, here's my vital behaviors. These are the most important things I have to get done today. I need to send my invites. So the first 15 minutes, you're going to send invites. The next um, 15 minutes, you're going to check into your challenge groups. The next, you know, go through your business activity tracker. Make sure those four vital behaviors, those invites to the challenge group, those invites to coaching, taking care of your clients. That's another really important one. Getting your social media posts ready. You put that in, you put that in and you start with the most important things. You don't start with the pretty graphics. You don't start with scrolling your newsfeed. You start with getting those done and putting them in your schedule. Just like you schedule your workout. You're gonna schedule exactly what you're going to be doing. Um, my days are always changing. So something that I've found that works best for me is before I go to bed at night, I do a brain dump. I write down everything I want to do the next day, everything that's on my mind, if I didn't get to it, or I just know like Thursdays, I always do this. Um, and then I put it in my schedule. I put it in my planner. I'm like, I'm going to do this here, 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 here's so how much time I'm going to put on it. And here I number them The number of is important. So if there's something I'm going to miss, it's number 20 on the list that I'm going to miss. It's not number one. That way, when your alarm goes off at five o'clock in the morning, you're going to do a power hour. You don't sit there for 20 minutes being like, what should I do? Cause I did that. Like really at five in the morning, my brain is not working. So if you have a set schedule of exactly what you're going to do, you don't have to think about it. You're like, okay, I have five. Minutes. Got to get those done. Get them done. Go to the next thing. Go to the next thing. But if you have that already in place, you're going to know what to do because guess what? Scrolling your newsfeed does not count as business time. So if you are working your power hour and you're like, I just had a good hour of scrolling. You didn't do anything. What did you do to move your business forward? Not a thing, you guys. So that does not count. Shut your newsfeed off. I'm not kidding you. That was the best thing I ever did. Um, I ADD right here. I'll go right back and forth between things. And if my newsfeed's on, I can get stuck on there for a long time. So shut it off. Um, I'm sure Alana can show you exactly how to do that. Best advice ever. Um, Let's see, use your hidden moments. Okay, I use hidden moments like crazy. And Jess knows I talk about this all the time in my team page. I use any moment I can find. I will send an invite when I'm sitting on the toilet. I will send an invite when I'm putting gas into my car. I will send an invite when I'm waiting for someone, when I'm waiting for a meeting, when I'm doing something, instead of scrolling your newsfeed like you would normally do, or checking the news, or you know things that really, surfing the chive if you're a chiver um instead of doing those things maybe you should take that time to reach out to somebody think about every single person i guess has two hours of downtime a day that we're, we're just wasting like we're not really doing anything imagine what you could get done if you use those two hours like to move your business forward i i send voice messages i freaking love voice messages if you're short on time Voice messages are the best thing you can do. I can get through my messages so fast. I like to take my dog for a walk every day. You know what I do? I take my dog for a walk. I voice message everybody back on my Facebook. Or I send voice message invites because then I'm working and I'm, I'm walking him and I'm getting stuff done. I'm taking advantage of that time. Same thing as when I'm cooking. When I'm cooking, if Ryan's not downstairs, I'm sending voice messages. He's always like, it's like you're talking to yourself all the time. I'm like, I am. I got stuff to do. I got people to talk to. I have people to help. I'm excited about talking to people. And so I'm always using those moments, any moment I can find. Um, like, for example, we were going to Super Saturday. And we all stayed at somebody's house, and it was like a 20-minute, 15-minute drive, right? Um, and I was in the car. While the other coaches were all talking to each other and chatting, do you know what I did? I sent 25 Hey Girl messages out in that time because I was like, I don't have time. I'm so busy this weekend. I need to get this done. I know exactly. I'm very intentional about what I'm doing with my time because if I'm not – I won't be able to get everything done, especially 
as a new coach, it's easier. But as your, your team grows, as your business grows, you are taking on more. And as your goals grow, your actions are going to grow as well. You're going to be wanting to talk to more people um, and do more and take more action. And as that grows, you really need to take advantage of those moments because you have them. Um, something that's really cool to do is just um, really take a day and record what you're doing with your day. I had all my coaches the other day record how much time they spent scrolling on Facebook. Like just anytime I was like, no judgment, just sit there and record how much time you go on Facebook. And um, everyone, I'm almost everyone was over an hour on scrolling. I was over an hour. Ah, I was so mad at myself, right? But we do, and we don't even think about it. It's so mindless, and we do stuff like that all the time. So think if you took a day and you just quit. Where's my time going? Where's my time going? And you were honest. You have to be honest with yourself, you guys. Um, don't make excuses for yourself. Sit there and, and take your planner and be like, okay, I did this here, this, this, and just record. Anytime you, you go on, you know, whatever your weather app is, but anytime you check out the news, anytime you watch a TV show, um, record what you're doing. And then look how much time is going to some of these things. Cause you'll be surprised. You might sit here and think, Oh my gosh, I only scroll my news for like 10 minutes. And then you record it and you're like, Oh my God, I spent three hours on my news feed yesterday because you just don't, you don't think about those things. Um, and I'm, I'm normal. I freaking love Netflix. I love it. I love Netflix. My boyfriend and I, we love to watch Netflix together. You know what I do when I'm watching Netflix? I'm probably sending hey girls. I'm probably messaging people. Sometimes he is like, you gotta put your phone down. And I, I'm, I do that as well um, because you do need time. I understand. I don't expect you to work 24 seven. Um, you do need that, that time for yourself as well. But if, if your boyfriend's watching cops and you don't like cops, which is like the situation in this house, I'm going to be working while it's on the TV, right? Um, take advantage of those times as well. Um, let's see. Your action has to meet your goals. Um, this is just something I think is really important um, because as a busier person, you probably, you naturally just want to take less action. I just, you know, you just like, you kind of are like, okay, three invites a day, two coach invites a day or whatever. You get this, like this thing going, but as your goals grow, like let's say you are pushing for diamond right now and you're only sending one coach invite out a day, open up to two bump it up to three, really look at what your goals are and make sure what you're doing matches that. Um, if your goal is success club 10, but you're only inviting five people a week to a challenge group, it's, I don't know, I couldn't hit success club 10 inviting five people a week. There's no way I could do that. Maybe you can, which is cool, but um, really make sure that your action is matching um, what you want to accomplish. And Something that's really important, you guys, is being clear, being having clarity about what you want. I listened to an amazing podcast recently um, that talked about if you were to shoot an arrow, um, th this is like, okay, I'm going to say this wrong, but you can't shoot an arrow if you don't have a target. So if you're sitting there and you're like, well, I want financial freedom. What is financial freedom to you? What is the number of financial freedom? Or I want to leave my job. How much money do you have to make to leave your job? We have like wish-washy things that we want. We're not clear. We don't have that clarity in what we want. And then we're shooting an arrow at no target. So we never hit it because there isn't actually something there. It's like telling somebody that, not telling somebody what, what you want for Christmas and then getting mad because they didn't get you what you wanted because you didn't tell them. You don't know, right? Um, so make sure that you're really clear on that. And make sure you guys, the reason I talked about really fancy graphics and all this fun stuff, that's really great. And that's really fun. I actually just did... An hour ago, I was on another team call talking to them about where your time is going. Your time needs to be going to building your business. If you are spending the time that you're working, especially as you start growing a team, 90 to 95% of your time goes to you, goes to you moving your business forward. So when you're writing down what you're doing, I want you to take two highlighters, take a blue and a yellow highlighter. If it's for your team, highlight it in blue. If it's for your business, highlight it in yellow. And your page better be filled with yellow highlighter. Because if it's filled with blue highlighter, then you're doing it wrong. Because people learn by watching you. If you expect your coaches to hit success club, you better be hitting success club. You expect your coaches to recruit, you better be recruiting. And so you, they're not gonna do what you tell them to do, they're gonna do what you show them you're doing. So when you're making this, this organization chart and how you're gonna be scheduling your time, 
make sure that that time is going to build your business. So yes, making a beautiful, fun graphic sounds awesome to some people, but is that moving your business forward? Really ask yourself with everything you're doing, is that moving my business forward or should I spend that time messaging five people or should I spend that time forming with someone? Um, I, something, just some tips on how I schedule my day. Um, I only go on my team page to read through everything one time a day. Um, I'd love to go in there more. Just knows I love our team more than anything in the world, but I don't have time to sit in my team page or my challenge groups for either of them. This goes for either. Both of those, I go in in the morning, I post something of value, and I post a call to action, something that they can use, whether it's my challenge group, something my challengers can use, if it's my team page, something my team can use, and then I go through and I comment on everything my challenge group I go comment on everything my team page and I do not go back into those groups maybe I listen to a really good like podcast and I want my team or my my challengers to know about it I'll go copy and paste it and put it in there but I won't scroll at all I won't look at anything until the next day because if I spend all day in my challenge it's easy to spend all day in your team page or in your challenge group and reading all of these things but that's not moving my business forward I have to make sure until I get those invites out, until I'm talking to people, I get my vitals done, then I can go back and do those other things. Um, and if you're short on time, you just have to be so intentional, 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 that's not a word, um, about where your time is going. Um, your team is going to know that you love them. They're going to know that you care about them, but they're watching you. They want to, they want to see you succeed. They want to see you move forward. So make sure that, um, Make sure that you are doing your vitals as well. Um, I, that's like all I wrote down, but you guys, I'm way better with questions. Like if you have questions for anything, seriously, I'm terrible reading off of notes and trying to give you guys something to say. I'd much rather answer questions for people. So um, is there any questions you guys have or anything that I can tell you about? Seriously, on anything. Yeah, I've got five. If someone has a smaller amount, go for it. I couldn't hear you. Not as, as like I'm going to hear better from my ear next to this. What was that? How's that? Better? It's so little better. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I can move to my computer if this is not good. I can uh, hear you now. I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so my first question is, we all know there's a difference between easier and better, um, but it's always dependent on your daily schedule. If you are super full, which one you should choose to do. So for you personally, was the easier schedule better to stick to or was the better schedule better to stick to? I hope that made sense. I'm a little confused. You know what I mean? Um, okay, so like an easier schedule would be you wait until the end of the day so that you can focus on one job and then move on to the next job. The better schedule is to post productively throughout the day. Um, so I'm just wondering which one worked better for you. Well, I don't really, I never just wait until the end of the day to get my stuff done. Um, okay, so I'll just say if you're having one of those days where you literally have an hour, half an hour maybe you have you have a couple 15 minute pockets in your day what are you going to do at that time your time is going to go number one to send your invites oh actually honestly number one for me is is checking in with my challenge group because they're paying to work with you <laughs> so don't be okay. shitty to them um and they're your future coaches uh and then number two would be going to your sending invites sending messages i send messages every single day rain or shine like making sure i'm at least connecting with a couple of people you can easily do that in a couple that you don't even need time set aside to do that you can do that in five minutes um but i i guess i i don't 100 percent understand the question um because like i said really set aside the time like like it's your job like it's your boss let's say your boss you know how people say with your fitness journey like you're scheduling an appointment with your boss it's the exact same thing that if this is important to you if you have a strong enough line you want it to work you're going to show up 
um, and you're going to do it. And it's, it's really that simple. And so really finding those pockets and knowing, like I have coaches on my team who can only work 15 minute pockets. Um, and I've had days I can only work 15 minute pockets. But I'm not using 15 minutes to watch Netflix or to relax or to do this. I'm using that 15 minutes to move my business forward. Um, so just make sure you know when those pockets are, or let's say you don't know, you work a job where you get 15 minute breaks every once in a while, but you don't know when they're coming. You've made that list and from top to bottom. Um, mm -hmm. You made that list, you're starting with the first thing on the list in that 15 minutes, and then you're going to the next thing on the list in that 15 minutes. Um, just so you're making sure you get your vitals done every single day. Um, yeah, Jess, Jess just said, I feel like it's working smarter, not harder, using time wisely and efficiently. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're so smart. She's good at this stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Um, three of my questions are kind of moot now that you've discussed that. And after listening to you before, um, just to reiterate, the most efficient use of your time throughout your day was for specifically inviting, correct? That and, well, your vitals. You just have to make sure okay. you're showing up to your vitals every day. Um, and like I said, don't be a coach who doesn't go to her challenge group. There's nothing that makes me more crazy than coaches who don't check into their challenge groups and comment on their clients' posts because you told them you were going to offer them an amazing experience. So that is so important. Don't think of that as a waste of your time because those are your future coaches as long as you're giving them the love and support they need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, last one is a little bit more specific to my particular situation. Um, so there will be days where mm -hmm. I work eight hours and get home on time. And I have those 15 minute breaks and then an hour lunch where I can get all my stuff done. And then there will be the days where I work 16 hours and I go in on weekends to finish up some work that's got a particular deadline. So when my day job requires me to change my schedule daily or weekly to work late for a deadline or work on weekends, um, like when I'm specifically told not to take breaks, how do I make the time to work on my business when I am provided zero time at work? Do I just have to do it all on the shitter or? <laughs> No, I would just give yourself grace on days like that. I mean, uh, there's just days that there, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, that it's just not, you know, maybe right before you go to bed, you can send a couple of messages and you can check into your group. Um, and that's going to happen. I mean, more frequently, obviously to you, if you have a schedule like that. Um, but something that I did is if I had to miss a day, um, as a new coach, I sent five invites every single day, no matter what. Um, I said more, but as a new coach, it was five every single day. And if there was a day that something happened that I wasn't able to show up, I just doubled it the next day. Um, so, and with a schedule like that, if you know there's a day you're not working at all, or you have more time, mass invite on that day, or put more of your things to do on that day. Um, I personally like to break it up because it just like overwhelms me to do too much in one day. Um, but like I said, your schedule is going to have to work for you. Um, it's going to be different for every single one of us. Right. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Yes. So we have such a crazy schedule, girl. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ten more minutes, guys. So get those questions out there. Does anyone have one off the top of their head right now that they want to ask? I have one. Cool. Um, so um, I'm an EMT. It's a lot of work. I work 12 hour days sometimes and everything. So it's just a lot. How do you keep your energy up through those kind like those days? Is it like a mental thing you have or do you just, how do you keep up your energy? Um, well, first off, focusing on your own health and fitness goals because I know when times get busy and life gets crazy, you don't want to eat healthy and you don't want to do those things, but a lot of your energy is going to come from taking care of your body and fueling your body. 
Um, so if you're making, you know, your workouts a priority and you're making your nutrition a priority, you're going to have more energy. If you're drinking your Shakeology, for me, Shakeology was huge for my energy. Um, so making sure that you're doing that. Um, and then I get excited about this. I don't know about you guys, but like I have days where I'm, I'm not always a happy person, believe me. But what I do when I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, life sucks and I'm just in a bad mood. I remember, I start thinking about how excited this opportunity makes me. I start thinking about my future. I start thinking about how I'm going to move to Colorado and how I'm not going to have to go into work anymore and how I'm going to do this full time. Um, I think about how the challenge groups changed my life. I go into the challenge groups and see these other women who it's changing their lives. And then I just get so excited. Like, this business makes me excited. The future for me makes me excited. The future for my coaches makes me excited. The future for my challengers makes me excited. And it's hard for me to look at all of that and still be upset. But if I 100% am having just a real shit day and I'm not going to be in a good mood, I don't send invites. <laughs> I just, because it's going to come across in my invites that I'm not in a good mood. Um, but I do, I do go through my messages or I do something else that I can do. And then I double up the next day. Um, but how you're feeling is probably going to come across in your messages. <laughs> I'm also drinking tea that like late at night that has caffeine and it was probably not a good idea. <laughs> um, we've been talking about time and scheduling this whole time, but I wanted to throw a different kind of question at you, Jenny. Um, I always love your posts yeah. and I think they're just awesome and, um, I always want to steal them. Do you have places that you get post inspiration or, um, can you share with us like any of your tips for, um, just getting out good, good posts on social media? Yes. I am only like creative, like 10 minutes, maybe twice a week. That's it. Right. I'm not a creative person at all. Um, I like my brain like stops working. I feel like sometimes. And so when I have that 10 minutes of like creativity, I literally write out so many posts. I'm just like writing them out. I'm messaging them to myself. And so that every other day of the week when I'm sitting there and I'm like, shit, like I have nothing to say. I just go into that and then I copy and paste some of those. Some guidelines that I found work best for me. Number one, I coach about, post about coaching every single day. And it's not like a join me. I mean, I do at least two call to action coaching posts. And I try to do at least one, one, maybe two challenge groups, just depending on the time of the year or the month. If I'm already at Success Club, I really focus on coaching. But um, so I, I do the call to actions, at least two challenge or two coach, one challenge a week. And then every single day I do a bread come, come about posting or about coaching. Maybe it's that. I like, um, I, I can't even right now. Maybe it was, it was that, Oh, one time I forgot to take my, pay my energy bill for a whole year and they shut off my electric. So organization is so great. I'm talking about this. Um, and I had to pay $2,000 to get my, my electric turned back on. No way in hell would I have been able to pay $2,000 to get my electric turned back on. Um, if I didn't have coaching, um, so, and I know that's like a crazy example, but there's so many things that you just think sit and make a list one day, sit down and be like, how has coaching changed my life? Breadcrumb that all over the place every single day, something about coaching. Um, I, I love to talk about staring at the clock at work. I love to talk about staring at the clock. I love to talk about waiting for the weekends. I love to talk about waiting for 5 PM because that was me. And so people, and I know there's other people like that out there. Um, also, I kind of, um, Katie Hefner has such an incredible training on YouTube about branding yourself um, and really finding your person. And you name her. Like this whole thing, you write down exactly who your person is because you, if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one. If you're speaking to, um, if you're speaking to your person, they're going to know. They're going to get it. So I sat down on a weekend when I didn't, I got my invites and everything else done. This is like an extra fun thing. Um, and I made my person and I, everything about her down to the fact that she was a binge drinker in college, that she was a network marketing failure, um, that she lost X amount of weight. I, everything about her, that she has a dachshund, that she lives with her boyfriend and it's me. I mean, it's just really your brand is who you were before you were a coach. 
Um, I relate to CrossFitters. I relate to dachshund and dog moms. Um, I relate to girls who love to wear headbands. Um, those are like things that, because ask people like, what do they see in your page? Like, what do they think of? And you'll notice once you start making a brand, you'll notice because every single day I am tagged in every dachshund video that has ever been made every day because people know I love my dog. I post about my dog all the time. Um, CrossFit stuff. I get tagged in that all the time. Headband stuff. I get tagged in that all the time. You'll start noticing when you're really focusing on your brand, the things that make you, you, the things that make you different than another coach, people notice and they start thinking of you as that person. Um, and so those are just like three of the ones that I all the time. Dachshunds for sure. That's like my, my thing. But, um, I also, you guys, I have no problem. If I see a coach post something that really resonates with me, taking that and making it my own and posting it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there is. Some coaches are like, well, you shouldn't do that. I don't care. Like if it resonates with me, if it's my brand, I don't have any problem posting that. Like Alana said, she can, she, she can take any of my posts. You guys can take any of my posts. I don't care at all. Um, but make sure that you're posting consistently. That is your, that is your storefront. So if you just like don't show up, then they're going somebody else, somewhere else to get their motivation. So uh, make sure that you're in there all the time. Uh, there's, there's trainings that say like, find five things about you that you're consistently posting about, um, anything like that, um, that you can do to really get, get with your posts, I guess. Hopefully that, that kind of, that's a long answer. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right, we have about two minutes left. Anyone really quick before we finish up? No? Ooh, I'm sweating. All right. I'm sorry.